Pom pom pom. Pom 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 pom. Pom 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 pom. Pom pom. Pom 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 hey welcome one and all it's akira the dawn it's a beautiful day to be alive change my mind yo i literally just flew through the studio door landed on this seat Everything was set up. I set it all up before I left to San Diego to do a show. I just got back from San Diego. My train was delayed. I utilized my time wisely watching Eric Weinstein videos, responding to comments. I made a YouTube video. I uploaded that YouTube video. It's been a great day today so far. And uh, yeah, I started the show there singing Scott Adams' new theme tune, <laughs> which I did. Pom pom pom, pom 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 pom, pom pom. Yo, how come Scott Adams has got an intro to his live streaming and I don't? It's ridiculous. Why did I make him one before myself? Uh, oh, I should have prefaced that. Yeah, yo, anyone out there got a coffee or, or a beverage? Let's have a simultaneous sip in honor of the newest addition to the Meaning Wave universe. Uh, some might call it the meaning verse, some call it the Doniverse, some call it the Akiraverse. We had a poll on Twitter the other day, and Akiraverse actually won. I still kind of prefer Meaning Wave Universe, but anyway, you can feel free to chip in on this this issue. Like a Twitter poll is not a general election or anything. So, yeah, anyway, shout out to everybody locked in. Shout out to everyone who's been locked in. Shout out to everyone who was here early. I appreciate you. Shout out to everyone who's sent questions. There are far too many to answer, <laughs> but I will do my best to get through as many as possible. Uh, yeah. Josh Barebones Bear Clark asks, how do you decide as an artist to keep moving forward with what you love to do? What is your muse, so to speak? I'm 21 and a visual artist. I could even, if I could even call myself that. You should. That way, then you will be. I haven't decided yet what to do with my life, and I wanted to know how you keep it going. Ah. Well, this is a good question. Is the thing that people uh, often have trouble with, and I have kind of always known the direction I wanted to go in. I always knew I loved music. I always knew I loved creating, and I knew, always knew that I wanted to do that for as many people as possible on as large a stage as possible with as you know much uh, meaning and usefulness as possible. That's what I've always wanted to do. It's taken me a long time though to get to the point that I'm at now and now is the point where I kind of really get the muse thing and the meaning is the muse. Meaning is the muse. Meaning is the muse by which I mean meaning, having meaning in what you're doing is the muse and if there's meaning in what you're doing and there is momentum in what you're doing, and there's movement in what you're doing. You've got to keep moving like a shark, right? Keep going forward. Just keep moving like a goddamn shark. Don't stop moving, right? And uh, there's got to be meaning in what you're doing. If there's meaning in what you're doing, you'll get out of bed in the morning. You, you'll, you'll keep moving. And that's, that's factual. I find this to be true. And uh, as far as knowing the direction, th there are signposts in life, if you pay attention, that flipping everywhere they're everywhere it's crazy when you start paying attention you'll see the signposts and the signposts are synchronicities and when you start spotting synchronicities and paying attention to them if you pay attention they're signposts that mean that you're going in the right direction i've spoke about this before and i will continue to speak about it because it's important malcolm x said when you notice synchronicities it means you are walking with allah and he was correct. He was correct. Grant Morrison, my good friend, says that if you want to be a chaos magician, and that's uh, something that's going to be coming back into fashion over the next year or so, if you wish to be a chaos magician, first notice the synchronicities and then start noticing them, and then there'll be more. And this is true. The synchronicities are the signposts. I've been having insane synchronicities lately. Insane, insane, insane. Since I 
really sort of said, okay, I am going to release music on my YouTube three times a week at least. I'm going to commit. I'm not going to deviate. I'm just going to stay on this path. And I'm going to make stuff of meaning. And it's going to be a stuff of use to the world. And I'm just going to only do the stuff that I think is, is great and da-da-da-da-da and is useful. And I'll just do that. And I will do that. And I will do that. And I will do that. And that's what I've done. And as I've continued to do this, it's gone kind of crazy. And it's it's expanding every day. And the synchronicities are going Crazed, and I was yesterday. I was in my hotel in San Diego before this show, thinking about this whole musical journey, and thinking, you know what? I made a, a mixtape in 2012 called Zion 2012: The Apocalympics, and it was like a con concept album about the uh, conspiracy theory of the 2012 Zion Olympics, when people thought like there was going to be a staged alien invasion, and that was the peak of the last psychedelic age. That was the end of the last psychedelic age, and then we went into this materialist, punk, nihilist phase. And now we're coming back out of that. And I was thinking about that, and I was like, that was kind of the first sort of uh, deliberate meaning wave, I guess, that I released. And I got my, fr my friend David Piper to narrate it. I got him to like read stuff I'd written that was a kind of play on War of the Worlds. And uh, I haven't seen him for like five years. And I was thinking about that in my hotel room. And the people who'd employed me sent me some audio clips to play. For their, it was this whiskey brand, Monkey Shoulder. They also gave me this dressing gown. It's very nice. Uh, thank you for that, Monkey Shoulder. Anyway, they gave me these audio clips to play. Um, just little audio clips of people talking about Monkey Shoulder. Anyway, I pressed play on one of them. And lo and behold, it was read. This is not, this is completely true. I heard the voice of my good friend, David Piper, who narrated Zion 2012, The Apocalympics for me, coming out of my laptop speakers. A voice I hadn't heard for five years. A voice I'd just been thinking about. It was crazy, and they were all read by him. It was absolutely mental. I got on the train this morning, and the, I get a bunch of notifications come up. At the bottom of the notifications, the bottom one is a notification saying, it's David Piper, that guy's birthday. That was just one of many, 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 many crazed synchronicities yesterday, and today they've already been a bunch. And so, anyway... As an artist, keep moving forward with what you love to do. Isolate what you love to do. Isolate a thing that makes you feel good, that has meaning, and do it. And just keep doing it. And don't stop doing it. Do the shit out of it. Do it every day. The more you do it, the better you'll get. But if you get in a momentum, if you get in a flow state, flow state is the really important part of this, do not leave it. Sometimes you can't get back in the flow state. I've seen this happen. All right? So, find, ice, uh, yeah, isolate where you find meaning and execute, and then do not stop, and do not deviate, and do not be distracted by shiny baubles or roadside diners or whatever. Just, just stay on the path. And then you will have a wonderful, magical, charmed existence, and every day will be a miraculous, glorious miracle. So that. Thank you for your question. And, oh my God, the chat room is nuts. Well, Jason Callahan. I'm just going to randomly sort of look at the chat room and just grab a question out of it, along with the ones people have been leaving during the week on the Instagram and on the YouTube community section and on Twitter and on the Discord. By the way, if you're not in the Discord, join the Discord. It's a thriving, wonderful community of bad motherfuckers is what it is. It brings me great joy when I pop in there and I see all you guys having useful, interesting conversations. It's great. And also posting good memes. There's good memes being posted. I'm very, very grateful for the good memes. Thank you for the good memes. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, by the way, if you all could do me a favor and just post on Twitter or post on the Discord or whatever, that is, this, is, this is live now since uh, it started for 45 minutes after initially announced. That would be wonderful. I don't want to do that because it would distract me from answering the questions. Uh, yes. Jason Callahan says, what are the ways you can see that we can make the world a better place? And someone else asked that in a slightly different way, I think, earlier. As I recall, someone said, how can one as an individual make the world a better place? And the, the very simple and easy and factual answer to that is, is to how you make the world a better place is you make yourself into a better individual. It's very, very simple. You just make yourself into a better version of you, a better version of you than you were yesterday, because then you'll be like affecting the world in a, in a better way. It's very simple. And you keep doing that, and everyone does that. Imagine how much less, better the world could get very, very quickly. And this is what's happening at the moment, by the way. I see it happening, and it's wonderful. Another way you can make the world a better place as an individual 
And this is something someone once said to me in my old website, which used to have a big comment section and a message board and stuff back in the days when that's what people did before, before uh, sort of social networks ghettoized the internet. And I was saying something, I was upset at the world. It, it, we were in, well, it was all these wars and all this horrible stuff and all these children being kidnapped. And I was very upset with all this. And I was like, how could you bring a child into a world like this? And someone said to me, Akira the Don, you're, you're, you're a good heart, it's a good person. And if good people don't have children, we're screwed. We need the good people to have children and have as many of them as possible. Because otherwise, the only people who will be having children are the, are the dark people and the unthinking people, perhaps. And I was like, ah, oh, and I thought about that. And I, was, and I realized now that's completely true. Like, how do you change the world? How do you change the future? Have children and, make, and, and teach them well. Make, like, have a son and teach him how to be a man. Have a daughter and teach her how to be a, a woman. Teach, teach the boy how to harness all the glory and wonder of, of true masculinity. And teach your daughter how to harness and execute all, all the glorious potential and wonder of, of true femininity. Therefore, that way, you can save the world. And that's why I always say, only you can save mankind. And I've always said that, and it's true. Uh, I used to say that when I was like 10. Only you can save mankind. And it's true because it's only you, you, the only thing you can control in this world is yourself. You can't control anything else. And if you want to save the world, therefore, you must take control of yourself and save mankind in that fashion. Yes, 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 and yes. Simon Thompson, updates on JBP7. Yes, 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 yes. Where's my calendar? Anyway, it's in the next week or two. It's one of them. Next week, actually, uh, Fully David, who did the Glitch in the Matrix documentary and did that sit down with me, is coming to Los Angeles to shoot a documentary about a very special meaning wave project, a very special chapter in the expansion of the Meaning Wave universe is about to go down, and Fully David and the crew will be here to document that process right here in Don Studios and on the road as we travel to go and meet some interesting bad motherfuckers. So you all can look out for that. Short bus. Any plans to do some Robert Anson Wilson? Of course. Jesus Christ. You know, we're, we're ex the Meaning Wave universe is expanding into psychedelic territory as the culture swings back in that direction. And what kind of a fool would I be if I did not harness the, the wisdom and wonder of Dr. Robert Anton Wilson, author of the fabled and incredibly influential Illuminatus trilogy, well, co-author. So yes, of course. Dr. Bringus says, do you see a trend towards meaning and responsibility in the general population of the world? Or is it possible it's just our little niche group? Well, that's a good question. I do, I honestly do, I see that everywhere I look, but of course that could be confirmation bias because I've decided that that's what's going on and that's what I wanna see. But I, I see evidence of this all the time and I see evidence all around me and I believe that one easy way of seeing this is just the rise well, there's a, let's see a couple of things. Okay, one, go into a supermarket, and you will see uh, way more, say, organic food than you used to see. That's a small example of people sort of paying attention, taking responsibility, and wanting to do better for themselves and their bodies and the world around them. That's a simple little thing. The other one is you can go look at the viewing figures on the Joe Rogan's podcast. And there you'll see millions of people who are paying attention and listening to long form things and trying to educate themselves and better themselves on a, a very wide range of topics. Anyway, yes, I think shit is going great. I think it's getting great. And as I said, that could be confirmation bias, but if it is confirmation bias, I'm kind of hypnotizing myself into believing in a better future and therefore I'll be acting in a way that works to, to bring about that better future, which is also a chaos magic trick. So it works either way and I'm down. T. Rav Exoffer, which is an incredible name, says, how do you feel about people using your music? Some examples, DJs playing it, producers sampling, remixing it, or people playing it in the background of their videos. Thanks, it's a very good question. Uh, what kind of hypocrite would I be if I had a problem with people 
remixing my music <laughs> or playing it in the background of their videos or and who who on earth would have a problem with a dj playing their music i do wonder but the answer is some people do have problems with this now someone wrote to me recently saying oh thank you akira for using some of my music in your mr rogers mix thank you for that and i really like the way you used it but could you take the buy now option off your Bandcamp page? I don't like the idea of someone profiting off my work. And I thought, hmm, well, you haven't thought this through, have you? Now, if someone downloads this piece of work from my Bandcamp page, they can download it for free if they wish. They also have the option to pay some money, i.e. tip me, for the work I've done, because there's a lot of work that goes into these things. And why do you think that someone shouldn't get paid for doing this work and you said yourself thank you for you liked the way that you were put in the music and all that sort of thing and the fact is this person wasn't even a big person i've introduced i've had lots of people hit me up saying oh thank you for introducing me to this person's work do you think a dj should not get paid unless they're only playing music they themselves have created in its entirety do you think a radio dj should not get paid similar 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 so anyway, whatever, that doesn't fully answer the question, but that does answer that aspect of it. And of course, I'm, I'm overjoyed when someone uses my music in some shape or form. It's, it's the greatest compliment you can have. Now, something happened last week. Someone brought it to my attention. Someone used some of uh, JBP1 in a video at the begin for the intro of a video, and they didn't credit me. You should always credit people if you can. If there's a way of doing it, you should always do that. It's just polite. But they hadn't done that. And of course, this was because this person had used the music in the context of a video that was supposed to be some kind of takedown of Jordan Peterson. And of course, I didn't watch it because why? And uh, I also didn't get in touch with these people and have a go at them because why? Why add energy to that particular part of the world? Now, if someone else wants to go to that video and say, yo, that's Akira the Don did that music, then that's great. I'm down with that. Personally, I don't have time to expend my energy in such a fashion. But anyway, I'm very happy for people to use my music in whatever context. Uh, credit, you know, drop a credit and drop a link. That's like the, the civilized thing to do if you can, but whatever. You know, it's, a, it's all a wonderful thing. That's how the music gets out there. So thank you to everyone who uses my music in any context. I appreciate it. Yo. Okay. Uh, let's have a look back in the chat room. Uh, oh God, it's... It's insane in here. Joseph Lewis, thank you for the super chat. Just wanted to say thanks for the content. That's not even a question. That's you, just you being a bad motherfucker. And I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the super chat. Big shout out to everyone who uh, buys merch. That's really great. Big shout out to everyone who donates. That's really great. Big shout out to everyone who buys things in the band camp. That's amazing and means that I can do this stuff, more of this stuff, without having to do other stupid things. I'm DJing five nights this week, by the way. <laughs> I'm now DJing four nights every week. I've I just confirmed a new residency. Oh, that was a thing yesterday. I had this crazy sink. Minor, minor, minor sink. But anyway, I confirm a new residency. I step into my Uber, and the Uber pl sings to me, Hey, Mr. DJ. Hey, Mr. DJ playing that song. No, no, no. Beautiful world. Shouts out to Dose of Truth. Says, here's to being paid, you bad motherfucker. Dose of Truth, out there. Dose of Truth is providing a service. I see people, Dose of Truth runs one of these channels that posts clips of Jordan Peterson and people. And I've seen some people like moaning about this, like, oh, you're just stealing content. Uh. No, this guy is providing a useful service of going through these really long videos and isolating small bits of them and uploading them with a title that helps you find that thing. I've found loads of stuff that I otherwise wouldn't via such channels. It's a very useful service. And unless the creator is themselves doing that, then I really don't see a problem. Like, I think Jordan Peterson did at one point start a Jordan Peterson Clips channel. I never understood why he didn't just get employ people like Dose of Truth and Bite Size Philosophy and those people to just run it for him. Because I don't think it seems like he's had time to run it properly. But anyway, whatever. All your shouts out to everyone out there providing value in whatever way it is you know jason callahan says where do you dj uh you can check the on my website and on my facebook there's a gig calendar actually it's broken today but it'll be fixed later today <laughs> but anyway i am currently doing no vacancy every in, i'm in los angeles i'm doing no vacancy every saturday i'm doing good times at davy wayne's every sunday i'm doing i'm now new one 
I'm doing Madam Siam every Friday. And I'll also be there on Thursday this week for some reason. And I was last week. I don't know yet if that's going to be every week. I don't know what's going on there. Last, last Yesterday, I was in San Diego DJing a, an event for William and Glyn. They make fine beverages. Anyway, I'm all over the place. Solid Snake, what up, says, I've been able to expose so many people to these great figures through your music. Yo, that's dope. Thank you. We're, uh, yeah. Jaggy with you, says, songs are getting better. Did you pact with the devil? Yo, I'm in a flow state. I don't know if I expanded on this fully earlier. Did I talk about this last week? I can't remember. Tell me if I'm repeating myself. But I'm in a flow state. I'm in a flow state because I, I in February, I said I'm going to release music three times a week, which means I have to work on music every single day which means that I'm in a permanent flow state. Because once you get in a groove of creation and everything else kind of evaporates around you, you're in a flow state. And if you do that all the time, then you stay in flow state. And I am in constant flow state. And that means crazy things happen, like the creation of the Scott Adams track. For example, I get in here, I'm doing a bit of admin, I'm, I'm replying to some emails. Scott Adams' is podcast, Periscope is playing. It starts... He says the words that you hear. I instantly know that that's the perfect Scott Adams thing to sample. I've been wanting to sc sample Scott Adams for a long time. I instantly know that. I work on music every day. I make bits of music, make bits of music. I met like a couple of months ago, I made a batch of, of music in a certain feel. I, instant, I, have, I have a library of music. That I make music, I put it in a library so I can access it. That Scott Adams thing, I, I just look at my library, I scroll. I'm not looking for words or anything. I'm just literally just kind of, it's all a blur. I only had one contact lens in at the time as well. And I just click a song. I don't even think. I click a song. I don't even read the title of it. I click the song. The music fits perfectly with what he's saying. It's the exact same tempo as his, his little bom 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 intro. And it's the same key. The, what are the chances of that? This is hundreds and hundreds of bits of music. And it was perfect. And I just expanded on it a bit. I, I cut him around a bit. I added some extra stuff to it. It was done in under an hour. It was insane. It was perfect. It was beautiful. It was... So I'm, I'm in flow state, and so that's how things are getting better, and that's how things are getting faster. So I just have to keep riding this wave. I need to stay on the wave, not come off the wave. That's, that's the trick. So, yeah. What a time to be alive. Yo, 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 yo. Accidental poet is out there. Big up, you bad motherfucker. Says, I have profound respect for an open, f for open format, but do you find it more difficult than, say, a house tech or a 170 BPM set? Yes. Well, this is a good question, and... If you're not musical, uh, open format basically means you can play anything, <laughs> is what it means. And house DJs, you say you're a house DJ, you're playing like 120, 130 BPM. That's one BPM, one, sorry, a particular BPM. So it means all your songs are in the same, they're all the same tempo. Open format is all over the place. Now, there are benefits, and uh, there are benefits to playing in one tempo. It's really easy to mix. And you don't have to think about anything other than just slightly increasing and decreasing the sort of intensity. Open format means you, you're going all over the place. But the glory of that is you can sort of start slow-ish, say with reggae, around 60, 70 BPM. And you can just keep going up, 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 up till you get to like 120, 130, 140. And then you come back round again. And you can keep doing that, for example. Or you can, I mean, that's one thing you can do. So it, it's a way you can create really dynamic sets. You can take people on a real dynamic sort of thrilling journey. It also does mean it's, it's, it is very, a lot more difficult technically to execute. And also if you have situations where, I don't know, so you have clients and they want certain songs to be played at certain times, like working that in in a fashion that works with what you're doing and it isn't disorienting to the listener and doesn't destroy the journey is a challenge. But, you know, I'm a bad motherfucker. I like challenge. I'm out here trying to create incredible transcendent experiences and challenge myself at all times to be greater. So it's dope. Anyway, thank you for what you're doing, Accidental Poet, you bad motherfucker. And thanks to everyone out there running music channels, running music YouTubes, making mixes, putting all those things together. You are making the world a better place. You're providing a wonderful service. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. TK says, saw your recent stuff, but I'm a bit confused. What's the appeal of Scott Adams? Well, if you don't know Scott Adams, Scott Adams, he zeroes in. You know, he has a subject. His subject is persuasion. That's what he's interested in. So he has been teaching the world 
persuasion for many, 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 many years. Everything he does is in itself utilizing the techniques of persuasion while simultaneously explaining to you how it works. So that's what he does, and that's a useful thing. In this world, persuasion is being used by all people all the time, some unknowingly, some not. And it's a great, great tool to have in your arsenal, and it fits in with the rest of the Meaning Wave universe very well. Uh, Jordan Peterson utilizes the tools of persuasion all the time. And if you don't know that, if you don't recognize them, then, then you won't know when it's happening. Although one of the great things about, sort of one of the interesting things about persuasion, which is completely true, is that when it's being done to you, and you know it's being done to you, it still works. Can confirm. Anyway. Teresa the Kid says, that's what I like. I listened to some really old shit the other day. Alice DJ on my ears. Yo, I played a really great Alice DJ remix in the club the other day, actually. So there. Back to the question. Who asked? Gospel According to Rev Jr. says, have you ever considered restoring a silent film, rescoring a silent film you may enjoy? I think you could do some justice to a Todd Browning flick or something like Mystery of the Leaping Fish. Yes, I've always wanted to do this. This is something I've always wanted to do. And thank you for reminding me because I'd forgotten about it. It was something I was, it was on my to-do list like five, ten years ago. So great. Yes, I do want to do that. And if anyone else has ideas for silent films, I should rescore. Uh, why don't you join the Discord? Link is in the description and go hit the suggestions, chat, and drop them in there. That's a great idea. Which record, Justin Soka, Socha, Soka asks, was your biggest musical influence? Which record from your youth? Mine was MC Tunes, The Only Rhyme That Bites. Got me out there searching for more. Yo, I honestly could not isolate a single, single record that was my biggest influence, although maybe. There was an Adam Ant record, because I used to listen to that when I was in my mama's tummy. And I used to, well, they used to play me a lot of music, but apparently when Adam and the Ants came on, I used to kick along. So maybe it was Adam and the Ants. Who knows? Haiku King, you bad motherfucker. Haiku King's out there. Uh, congratulations to Haiku King. He's got uh, a top comment on a H3H3 video, apparently. He got 666 likes today. Congratulations to you. He says, how does it feel to be on the rise to immortal levels of clout? Oh, that's seeged in nicely. Since I got that clout sample from Justin Peterson talking, Jordan Peterson, <laughs> what? talking about HGHG. Yeah, it feels great. It feels great to be rising to immortal levels of clout. It really feels good. That's another part of flow state. It just feels good. It feels good out here. It's joyful. I'd be walking around and people be like high-fiving me on the street and shit. It's happening a lot right now. People, someone did it outside the studio the other day. They were like, oh, massive fan. Da, 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 da. What are you doing here? Why are you in LA? Why are you in LA? It's like, it's my studio. He's in the building directly beneath mine. I mean, sorry, the studio. How about that? Ding, ding, ding. Noah Crow. Hey, happy birthday, Noah Crow. Happy birthday. Congratulations on being here. I'm glad you're here. It's a beautiful time to be alive. So would you ever consider doing a meaning way with Aldous Huxley or Ald Edgar Allan Poe? Oh, Aldous Huxley's been on my list from Dot. I've actually sampled him quite a bit in the past on rap songs. And one of my artists is named after him. So you, you better know that shit is in the pipeline. Good question here from Jason Callahan. Is there a way to catalyze self-actualization without having a kid? Because having a kid is an easy way of doing it. I've discovered you have a kid and suddenly it's like, fuck, I've got to be, the, I've got to be amazing right now. I can't be fucking around even slightly. Well, this will just require d discipline on your part. This is the, where discipline really comes in. So I suggest you follow Jocko Willink on Instagram. He posts a picture of himself, uh, his watch every morning at 4 a.m. And that posts very highly, highly motivational videos. Um, but yeah, no, this is d discipline. So what will help with this is uh, sorting out your diet, I would say. So because diet is the root of a lot of people's problems, I put some... Peterson in a, in a recent JBP wave, him pointing out how you can, most people can solve anxiety by fixing their diet. I have fixed many, many of my problems by sorting out my diet, which was, which was always problematic. I've gone for the carnivore option. I've been strict carnivore for nearly five months, which means I just eat meat, and I isolated very quickly that I got the most energy and sort of good feeling from steak, so I just eat steak. And if I'm on the road and I can't get a steak, I just get burger patties. Or yesterday, I just got jerky. I honestly, I felt, yeah, I was like, totally works. 
if you sort your diet out, that removes a lot of the problems and a lot that a lot of people have. It can sort like like anxiety, bloating, tiredness at random times of day, whatever it is. So yeah, and then just get on like self discipline and just put yourself a schedule of what you're gonna do and just stick to it and don't deviate. Don't deviate from the path. And very, very, very quickly, self actualization will be going mental. So there. Uh, having a pop back at the chat room. Uh, any any super chats I haven't answered? No, that's good. Crazy, all over the place. Uh, rescore Nosferatu says de-rest. Good idea. Good idea. So Pepper says, do you know any of the YouTube creators that mix visuals with lo-fi? You asked that before, didn't you? Yeah, so I've seen some of these guys. I really like it. I would really like to develop a relationship with people who do that sort of thing. That would help me produce more content. So if anyone knows people like that who, who uh, think who would who think I would get on with visually, stylistically, and, and um, with regards to meaningfulness, <laughs> then yeah, introductions, all that sort of thing, dope. I love all that shit. I would love to make more stuff in that vein. So yes, happy <laughs> slarty bart fast. Happy Slarty Bart Fast, I hope I'm saying that right, who says, how did you like my dancing? You left some questions in the Discord about what I thought of dancing, if I thought it was a good thing or not. I do think it's a good thing. I'm a big fan of dancing. And he has, he dances great. And do you know how I know he dances great? Because he came down to one of my gigs last week. He came down to Good Times at Davey Wayne's. And I got in there, and I was, I sort of got in at 10, set up. And there was this guy moonwalking around the place. And anyway, he came up later and said something about, being meaningful with nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I was like, ah, yes, you're one of these. You're one of my people. Well, I mean, everyone's my people, but I've got people who just know me for DJing and they just come down because they think I'm the best DJ on earth. And I've got other people who know me from this stuff. And then they come down and discover I'm also the best DJ on earth. Anyway, it was wonderful to meet you and your dancing is magnificent. Uh, happy Slarty Bartfast works for SpaceX which is a nice coincidence. I DJed their Christmas party a couple of years ago. And uh, one of the things I want to do is be the first DJ on Mars, which requires me to ingratiate myself with that community, some shape or form, I believe. And the chat is all over my face on the video, I've just noticed, because I've been looking at it. Yeah, uh, 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 oh. yeah, shout out to all the dancers. Happy Slarty Bartfast says he's learning to rap now. Wonderful. That's great news. Proud of you. Smash it. Haiku King says, you're from the future, aren't you, Akira? And he was asked, that was on my list of questions. There's, this has been a rumor that's been going around for ages, uh, ever since I released Living in the Future. <laughs> Back in 2004. My record label's called Living in the Future. I mean, you know, I've said this before, me and Kanye West, we live in the future. There's a bunch of us we're out here living in the future. And like, we come in and we report back and we tell you that it's great and it's good and, and, and help help everyone who's not in the future to come into the future because the future is a great place to be. So I am in the future. Shouts out to Chris Chan. Shouts out to Internet Historian. I tweeted today, do me a favor, have a great day because uh, <laughs> I wanted to see what it looked like in print. And also, it's true, I want, I want people to have a great day. And Internet Historian responded, make me, which caught, which sparked a bit of a frenzy. People going, oh my God, is there going to be an internet historian wave? I do love it when people want waves that already exist. I already did something with internet historian, but it's okay, because me and your boy, internet historian, are working on something brand new and original and bespoke. This isn't something where I've sampled something that exists. This is something where he's been recording stuff especially. And where an emphasis on the special the special, when I say especially, the special. Shouts out to Lego Movie number one. I don't think I'm going to watch number two. They've stuck a load of gender politics in the trailer. Yo, we don't, we don't need that. That's not helpful. It's not helpful to the Lego brand. Lego is, you know, a, a beautiful thing about, like, building and also sometimes destroying. And it doesn't need gender politics in it. So we'll be giving that movie a miss. I did the same thing with... Uh, Incredibles, that one got a miss. <laughs> Same reason. We ain't about that life. Ain't having that. And, you know, a long time ago, I announced that I would not be watching Spider-Man. 
the, the Spider-Man relaunch of Sony. I was like, not watching that. I love Spider-Man. He's one of my favorite characters, but I'm not watching that. It's rushed. It's going to be bad. I know you can see it's bad, and the webbing is wrong in the costume, and it's bad. And we want we want Spider-Man to go back to Marvel. So I said, not watching that, and I encouraged all all my people to do the same. And lo, it was a disaster, and it went back to Marvel. Never underestimate the power you have by not engaging in crap. This is happening with the Star Wars community right now as well. They, they were like, do you know what? I didn't watch those last few Star Wars movies either. I don't need that crap in my life. But uh, yeah, that the, the, the people said, no, we're not going to go watch these movies because they suck, and, and you're insulting us, and, and you're mean and rude, and uh, this isn't fun. And uh, you know, the bottom line is where, where they see it. And once the shareholders or whatever are like, hang on, why aren't people, why is that shit losing money? That's when your horrible, divisive, ugly, nasty politics gets forced out of stuff because people don't want to be losing money. Yeah. Shouts out to uh, the capitalist system keeping these horrible fuckers in check. Yo. Est whenever. Foul1026, what up? Perfect time to drop by. What about that Banff wave? Yeah, Banff wave. Banff wave is a great idea. I, I have a song called Banff, by the way. Did you know? Oh, shit. That's fucking perfect, isn't it? Banff wave used my song Banff, which I haven't yet vocaled. God damn. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. Fraser Pegg says, Lego movie made me cry. We, have all the, we all have the power of the special. Me too, man. I love that Lego movie. That was a beautiful, beautiful movie. It was the hero's journey in Lego form. And then the trailer for the new one, has a bunch of, like, gender politics stuff, and it's all like, oh, what, like, Chick did all the stuff in the first one, why, why is the boy the hero? And he's like, oh, yeah, I guess I'm not, oh, I guess I'm, like, a lame, lame guy. Shut up, get out of here, get out of here. We don't need that shit. We don't need that shit. Yo, 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 what up, Rast? What up, Zachary? What up, what up, Space Fish? What up, all of you bad motherfuckers? Let's have another question. Oh, here's a big one. Here's a deep one. Peter Panopoli says, could you talk about the state of morality in modern hip-hop and if you see yourself as helping bring about a more wholesome and respectful tone in the medium? Yo. Well, everybody knows. Everybody knows. That I'm a big fan of ignorant hip-hop. I really am. You know, I was big on... I, 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 I was up on... I was telling people Little Pump was amazing. <laughs> Like, when he was, like, a 9,000-play SoundCloud rapper. You know, I, I like ignorant hip-hop, and I think that there is a space in the world for every mode of expression. I think there's, you know, I, I, I'm, I think party music that just talks about dancing is good. And uh, I think music that expresses abhorrent stuff, there's a place for that also. These are all aspects of the human condition. Right? If you haven't integrated your shadow, then these things could cause you problems. That's the problem. The problem is, that, is people haven't integrated their shadows, and society perhaps hasn't fully integrated its shadow. But like the shadow side is as necessary as the light. It is as real as the light. So therefore, yes, uh, morality in hip-hop, you know. Actually, hip-hop right now is way more PC than it used to be anyway. If you go back to the early 90s, you listen to the stuff that Biggie was saying in 93 about like sodomizing F words and stuff, which was oxymoronic. But anyway, like stuff is way safer now. What's interesting now is like seeing like what you are and aren't allowed to talk about. So it's like, there's you don't really have homophobia in rap anymore. Certainly not like you used to and certainly not like you did even like three or four years ago. You know, people ain't on that thing. Uh, like a lot of words aren't used anymore that used to be words a lot of kind of concepts people aren't even talking about shooting people as much anymore and stuff like that it's getting a lot nicer and safer out there in hip-hop uh you can still call a lady a b-word but that's because it's been reclaimed and like ladies like to call themselves b-words now apparently bad ones as well but uh anyway there and uh bit a bit a bit a bit a bit in regards to the question about bringing a more wholesome and respectful tone in the medium I don't about in the medium, I just mean in the world, man. I'm about, I'm about wholesome vibes in general. I'm out here, I'm a wholesome motherfucker. That's what's up. Uh, wholesomeness. I was going to put this on a t-shirt. What was it? I forgot what it was now. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Anyway, yo, I'm a wholesome motherfucker, and that's what I'm about, and that's what I'm bringing into the world. I'm not the only person. There's other wholesome motherfuckers out there. But I do believe that wholesomeness is the wave. I've said this before. And uh, we're going to see a, re- a big surge in wholesome stuff, in wholesome music, in wholesome mimetics, in wholesomeness in general. Family stuff, like people like helping each other out and being nice. And that's cool. But it's, it's, it's balance. It's balance. Balance, rude boy. Um... Part of, I guess, one thing I'm I'm doing, which maybe hasn't been done before, is like as much. There will be more of it. I am utilizing the wisdom of people who have spent a long time thinking about stuff and working stuff out. And usually, rap music is made by people in their twenties, and people in their twenties haven't been around that long, so they haven't thought about things that much. So that's there's a big difference in what they're able to elocute on versus someone who's been thinking about some shit for 40, 40, 45, 50 years. So I'm putting the wisdom of the 40, 45, 50 years thinkers into rap music, perhaps, or into stuff that's influenced by hip-hop. And that that's new. Well, it's not new. Nothing's new, is it? But anyway, whatever. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> And yo, I am definitely about like you know wholesomeness and respectfulness, but at the same time, I do see a use for the other stuff. I don't think the other stuff is should be banned or whatever. It's nec- it's, it's part of the human experience. So there. Do 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 do. Mike Wiz, if the conversations everyone left and right were like the conscious parts of a psyche, what would be the unconscious conversations we aren't having? What is the shadow conversations we are missing? Well, we'll be having these conversations soon enough as privacy completely dies and as the, the, the veneer between the inside voice and the inside and the outside is, is destroyed. So we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Zachary Rohrbach, Sam Harris wave, if you're not the first person to ask. Yo, oh, here's a, here's a thing. Someone was asking about this earlier. They don't quite see where, where Scott Adams fits in. Uh, one of the things... Scott Adams wrote a really good book called How to Fail at Everything and Still Win Big, which was part biography, part sort of life guide. It introduced concepts like systems over goals, where, as in putting in a, how a system is better than a goal, because if you've got a goal, the whole time you haven't reached your goal, you're essentially a failure. And then once you've reached your goal, then it's like, oh, I've got the goal, what now? So if you put in a system that's getting you where you want it, that means you're winning every day, because every day you execute your system my system is you know releasing on youtube three times a week for example that's part of my system every time you do it you win so you're in a state of constant victory that was a good thing but part of his anyway part of his philosophy is is um he doesn't believe in free will like sam harris because he's he's aware of how how persuasion really works because persuasion really works and it does so part of that is is like his way of teaching people persuasion is to believe in the idea that we're like programmable wet robots, moist robots. And his, he has a little section in his, like he has this reading list, which will teach you how to be a persuader. And part of that involves like accepting that people are persuadable. Cause if you don't believe that people can be persuaded, you'll never be any good at persuasion. And then the, basically the end thing of that is Sam Harris's book, free will. So basically, yeah, Scott Adams, ideas really fit into this whole pantheon. In, a, in an important way. And we will be, int- we'll, we will be investigating and, and going through them a lot more as time goes by. And uh, the whole persuasion thing is really important in all of these things. Because if you don't understand that persuasion even exists, you're missing out a big part of the human experience uh, and the reality of our nature. Now, whether or not I, b- I personally believe in free will and all that sort of thing, that's a conversation for another day. But let's just say I don't agree with Sam Harris on that one completely car wiggloom thank you for five bucks super chat how often do you update the discography on Bandcamp? i want to buy it but don't want to miss out on all the stuff you drop regularly gratitude well i drop stuff all the time <laughs> so it's one of these things it's like you could just like wait for the perfect moment but the perfect moment will never come because i just keep dropping shit so what you should do is just do it now just buy it now and you get 80 records or something ridiculous and then, you know, getting the new ones, they're all on free to buy or donate if you wish. So you can just keep picking up stuff as you wish. And, yeah, people keep asking me to do a Patreon. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I've, I have a lot more work to work out that. But anyway, I would suggest just go buy the discography. It's a steal is what it is. 
It's a crazy steal. Sammy, Bo Selector, does free will even matter? Very good question. Does it even matter? I really like that thing that Peterson says when, when someone asks him, like, do you believe in God? He's like, well, I, I live my life as if God was real. That's a very good answer. And it's a very good way to live your life. Very good way to live your life. It's also kind of a way that people are going to be having to live their lives as, as privacy and all those things just completely dissolve and eradicate. Because, you know, part of the idea of God, I suppose, is, is that people are watching, or that someone is watching everything. Zachary Rohrbach, thank you for the super chat, says, I sent a donation through Streamlab. Love you, man. Aw, thank you, man. I appreciate you very much. Uh, thank you very much. This stuff, honestly, you, had, you have no idea how much of a difference this shit makes to the life of me and my family. It makes a huge difference, and we are very, 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 very grateful to all of you every day. Jason says, I drive for Lyft and play nothing but stop thinking. Oh, that's dope. Thank you, man. More stop thinking's coming up, just as more what's waves are coming up. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Carl... Carl Wiggum says, I also just wanted to hear how you pronounce my name. Do you know what? I read it as Carl Wiggum. That's what I saw. I saw Carl Wiggum. Fraser Pegg says, on the rare occasion when an Uber driver forces an aux cord on me, I play JBP wave. That's because you're smart, righteous, and a bad motherfucker out there trying to make the world a better place in, in any way that you can. And we appreciate you. So there. da 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 Haiku King says, do you know the legend of Chris Chan? Yo, that's my boy. We out here in the future. Of course I know Chris Chan. Shit. Synapsion. Synapsion says, if you only had 24 hours to live, what would you do with your time? What things would you change if you only had eight hours to live? Whoa, that's deep. So if I only had 24 hours to live, I would spend a beautiful, meaningful day with my family. I have a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful son. I would hang out with them. Depends where we were in the world at the time. If we would hang out with other people. Depends if I had a jetpack. Depends if I had a portal. But I would spend time with them is what I would do. I would spend some beautiful, meaningful time with this, this couple of people who I love dearly. Think about life. There's a billion people that you could meet and the, the, most of them are amazing in some way, shape or form. But you're never going to get to do that. So one thing that's good to do is that the people that you do have around you, like really, really, really get to know them and really, really, really spend time with them in, in as much and in any way you can. And really, you know, you could know someone for a lifetime. And you, you would you would only know a small piece of them anyway. And, you know, if it went down from 24 hours to eight hours, I would just make sure that the time I was spending was even more meaningful. Do you know what I would like to do? Because my son's always wanted to do this. He says he wants to be, he's always said he wants to be a skydiver. He loves heights. I love heights too. My wife hates heights. It's a very interesting thing. Anyway, I would jump out of an airplane with my son. Yeah, maybe that would be like the last, the last sort of five minute, the last minute or whatever. Do you know what? That's what we would do. The last bit where it was all about to disappear, me and my wife and my son, we'd all jump out of an airplane together. And she's scared of heights, but it doesn't matter because we'd all be together. And he loves heights, so it'd be very exciting for him. And I love them all, so it'd be very cool for me. Yeah. Sean Byrne says, fight me. I will not, unless you do anything to my son, in which case I will fight you and I'll stomp on your jaw. As if you, as <laughs> we were talking last week about how best to kill a dog if it tried to attack your son. And then someone, oh, I've got to find this. Someone uh, left a message on the video Democrats explaining how to do it, which was really nice of them. Thank you. Uh, why isn't 04 coming up? Why is the last Misery anymore, up? and I'm not going to allow oh, misery into my life, and I'm not going to put now. misery out into the world. If we really Remind me, I need a really Jamie. Like focused on it. I need a Jamie. Stuck to it. It would like... A Jamie. I think. I'm going to have to introduce a Jamie at some point in the near future. How about that? What do you think of a Jamie? Some people, have, I had someone say they wanted to. Here's another coincidence. Someone wrote to me being like, oh, could I basically, you know, I'm moving to LA. and I live in LA or something. I love what you're doing. Uh, if you ever need a Jamie, someone to, you know, help you with your podcast and stuff, hit me up. Anyway, I got this new DJ residency at this club called Madam Cyan. Guess who the sound engineer is? That guy. Yeah. 
Hey, I like him. He's a cool guy. How about that? What a fucking weird world. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> KGS said, Akira, now you're in America, get a concealed carry permit. Like guns or not, your family is first. It's true, my family is first. Or at least carry a knife. You're not in the UK anymore. Do you know my, my concern with knives is that someone could snatch it off you and then stab you. That's always been my concern with knives. You're not in the UK anymore. You're allowed to protect yourself. Yes, I am. I agree. And just knowing breaking a dog's leg is one of the fastest and most humane ways to get it to drop without hurting yourself or it too bad. Thank you. Break the dog's leg. Don't stamp on its head, which was my first instinct. Amazing. Uh, their snouts and gums are very sensitive. Okay. If two dogs are fighting or one has something precious, get someone else and simultaneously grab their back legs. Lift way up high and wheelbarrow them backwards in a zigzag. This is complicated. I can't even visualize it. This forces the dog's attention to stay stable on its front two paws while moving and shifting weights to either paw. They can't bite you either. All right. You're going to have to show me this in a video. May please film this. Send it me. Using a real dog, if, if, if possible, but don't harm the dog too much. By the way, I was in San Diego yesterday, and somebody hit me up like, oh, shit, like, come, ha come to the gym with me. I'll go to Jocko's gym. Jocko's here all the time. Jocko Willink, that is. But I saw the message too late to act on it. But So next time I go to San Diego, I'm going to go to Jocko's gym. Yes. Yes, 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 and yes. By the way, uh, we've only got, like, 10 minutes left or something, and then I'm going to have to get back to it being in my flow state and making amazing music. So how about that? Important questions in the chat room. If you've posted them already, post them again. Uh, super chat means I will definitely answer it. Dilbert Wave, Fraser Peg. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'm just sort of scrolling randomly here. Oh, God. Answer that. Shabba, shabba, shabba. Sammy, putting your defenses up is the quickest way to war. It's, it's profound of you. It's a very profound chat here. It's a very proud chat. Justin Tucker says, I'll be Jamie to your, I'll be Jamie. I'll gladly be your Jamie to my Joe. That doesn't make sense as a sentence. But I'm taking applications for a Jamie, basically. If you, if you, if you want to be a Jamie, then like hit me up. Join the Discord, all that type of thing. I need moderators too, by the way. We need mods. We're at that stage of the game. We need mods. If you want to be a Discord mod, hit me up. Join the Discord. Why should I trust you to be a mod? Why? Why? I'm now also at the point where I can't respond to all my tweets. I get too many tweets. So Discord is actually the best place because Discord doesn't have like 10,000, 20,000 or whatever people on it. It's got like 170. It's very intimate. It's nice in there right now. It's manageable. Just about. Just about. Sammy Bo Selector says Corbin wave. Lol. Lol. My favorite thing about Jeremy Corbin was when he was at Glastonbury uh, going on about how building bridges and not walls surrounded by a big wall keeping all the poor people out of the upper middle class holiday, musical holiday that is Glastonbury. He's a very funny guy. Captain Virgil says, Ben Shapiro. People are always asking me about Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro speaks so fast. Yo, I just realized what would be really funny. I don't know, funny. Might actually be interesting. Musically would be slowing down Ben Shapiro so he sounds chopped and screwed. Anyway, I like Ben Shapiro. He's very sweet, sweet. Little guy, person, uh, human. He really loves his wife. I really respect that about Ben Shapiro. Anyone else seeing JBP in San Diego today? What? Is he in San Diego today? I've literally just left San Diego. That would be ridiculous if that was the case. Don't mean to harp on this question, but have you thought about Robin Anson, how Robert Anson Wilson fits in? I answered this earlier. He obviously does. We're going into the psychedelic thing. Darth Brooker, is there an update for Mozwave? Yes. Basically, there will be more Mozwave. I love Moz, always have. Always will. Always have, always will. Don't have mods, have rockers, says D-Rest. You're a funny man, and I applaud you. <laughs> Luke Bostwick says, I'm watching you instead of watching JRE. You should feel honored. I really do. Who's on JRE right now that you're not watching? I mean, maybe it's someone rubbish. Akira, hi from Argentina. One question. JBP, hear your remix? Also, really thanks to enjoy your music. I'm strange Latin who thinks that can speak English. You speak English beautifully, Leandro. Thank you. Imagine, like, I know no other languages apart from Welsh. So I always think it's wonderful when someone speaks to me in English. The effort. Anyway, thank you very much. And yes, JBP, hear my remix. He tweeted wishes this week which was very nice of him. And it was also the first time he's used my at handle on Twitter. 
he's he's worked that one out now, which is great. He emails me, but now he's now he's asking me, and that's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Dr. Peterson. I'm glad that everyone liked that Wishes song. I love that song. It's a fucking great record. If someone else had made it, I'd have been like, you're a bad motherfucker. Have I have you met JBP personally? No. I, we've emailed, and I was in a I like he invited me to a gig he was doing. But I didn't hang around to meet him afterwards because lots of other people wanted to. And I thought, well, you know, I'll get to see him again sometime. But they might not. Yeah. Uh, when's JBP Wave 7 supposed to drop? Next week or the week after? It's one of those. I've got it in my diary. But just bringing up my diary would mean I, I get distracted from my thought train. Anyway. Uh, someone else wants to be a mod? Anyone wants to be a mod, sign up for the for the Discord. Link is in the video description. And send me a DM on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, am I missing anything else important? Oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, what? There's a ton of questions I haven't answered. God damn it. God damn it. Oh, well. We'll answer more next week. We'll be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Here's a thought. Should I do these more often and smaller? Would that be more useful? Would it be more useful to have like a, a live stream that wasn't just once a week, it was more often, and, but wasn't as long? Something? Anyway, Haiku King had a question, which I didn't answer. He said, how do you build a following? That's a good question. And the answer is the same answer as the answer of the first question. You don't want to think about building a following you want to think about how you can do something meaningful and useful. And then do it. And just keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. Do it every day. Don't deviate. Keep doing it. And if it is meaningful and useful, then people will, will, will come along and they'll, they'll want to hear more or see more or whatever it is. And you keep doing it with regularity. They know they, they can depend on you. Here's the thing. Artists don't think about this enough, and I certainly didn't used to. Like, you want to be dependable, right? If you're a man... You want to be a dependable man. You want to be a dependable husband. You want to be a dependable father. You want to be a dependable friend. People want to know they can rely on you in a, in a situation, right? If it all goes to shit, like if the walls all come down and society crumbles, you, they want to, people want to be able to depend on you. I was on the train yesterday, and there was a very rude man there. He had another guy with him who was, who, who was his subordinate, I guess. And they were just treating the whole carriage like it was their personal office. They were sat on different chairs on other sides of the aisle with earpieces in on phones talking to each other. And the boss guy was shouty, shouty, shouty. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, I let this go for a little bit. It was like, maybe they're just finishing a thing, you know. And no, they carried on. They was like, well, I could move to another carriage. I went to down the bottom of the carriage and... The other one was full, and down the other end, there was another guy doing the same thing. I walked back, and everyone was like, give me that eye, like, oh, look at these, like, they knew what was going on. So I was like, yo, excuse me, uh, do you intend to continue this much longer? And the guy ignored me for a bit, and then, so I, con I pressed it again, and then he kind of gave me this, like, dirty look and said yes. And I was, so I asked him again, and then, then he told me to sit down. He was like, sit down. I was like, excuse me? He's like, sit down. He's like, sit down. He's, he's like a really big, like 50-year-old American big guy. He's telling me to sit down. I was like, how dare you? Who do you think you are? What makes you think that, that you and your conversation and everything right now is more important than everyone else? Like, and then some other guy was like, yeah, it is a bit loud. It is loud. And he's, he's like, Ugh, sit down, ignore me. So then I had to explain to him, like I do my five-year-old son, Hercules. I've had the exact same conversation. Hercules does like, why can't I get my willy out in public? Look, I'm like, yo, okay, we live in a society here, right? And the balance between, like, uh, this beautiful, wonderful society we have in which you can walk around in the street without people throwing bricks at your head most of the time, the balance between that and complete fucking chaos is really thin. It's a thin fucking line. And if we all sit on trains shouting at phones and pretending other people don't exist, like, it, it could all just go to shit because someone might fucking, someone just might crack in that carriage and stab you in the face, all right? And anyway, he shut up after that, and that was that. And then some of the people on the train were like, oh, thank you, da-da-da-da-da. In that situation, I was the dependable adult. 
And it was full of people and everyone else was like, mm -hmm. all right. Anyway, that's a slight deviation from my point. But the point being, you want to be a dependable. You want to be dependable. And as an artist, you want to be dependable. If you want to build a following, you've got to be a dependable artist. People got to know they can fucking trust you to give them great shit that's useful to them. That's the stuff that they want. All right. If people are going to follow you, you've got to be dependable, motherfucker. So that's what I say to that. We live in a society. All right. And that means that we've got to treat each other with respect. It means we've got to consider other people. This is why Gary Vee is completely correct when he says that empathy is a superpower, nay, the superpower. It is. It is. All right? You've got you to be able to put yourself in the position of other people and try and understand where they're coming from and like act accordingly when you're interacting, when you're in the world, stepping out there in the world every day. Because this is a magnificent, magnificent, magnificent miracle. As Peterson said, it is a miracle. Just saying that, the word, it makes me tear up. Because this is a miracle, this thing that we live in. This thing that we've built, this thing that the people who came before us built, this thing that people died so that we could exist in, in this state of absolute, hitherto unimaginable luxury uh, and wonder and joy. Someone said this to me on my Twitter. Someone sent me something from Paradise Lost on my Twitter earlier uh, in response to me posting a meme in which I'd replaced uh, the change my mind meme. I'd replaced it with me saying, it's a beautiful day to be alive change my mind and uh someone sent me a passage from paradise lost sullen were we in the sweet air that is gladdened by the sun that is some real shit that is some real real shit right there right we look at it, the fucking sweet air gladdened by the sun it's a beautiful day to be alive act accordingly and on that bombshell, I'm going to go make some meaningful music. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. I'm proud of you. I hope that you're proud of you too. Join the Discord. We can hang out there. Thank you for 19,000 subscribers today. That's awesome. I'll be back.